Hello, I'm Rob Phillips, and welcome to my channel, where I help you live a more balanced and present life through yoga and meditation. Today, we're going to be doing a 30-minute full-body yin yoga sequence that's all about relaxing, all about calming the mind and the body. So if there's any sort of stress you're holding on to, if you're feeling busy at work or school or whatever you happen to have going on in your life, this will be a perfect chance to reset, relax the body, stretch it out with some long holds, and just calm yourself down in the most general sense. For props today, I'm going to recommend having a blanket and a couple of blocks. And as always, if you enjoy these videos, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more practices like this each and every week. Finally, whenever you're ready to get started here, we're going to begin in a comfortable seat. So once you've established yourself in this comfortable seat, we can close our eyes. And we'll just begin with a short meditation, short to get ourselves centered physically and mentally. So if the mind is feeling a little busy, if you are a little stressed, don't fret. It takes a little time. It is a process and kind of a journey we go on through this practice. And always, at least for this sort of work, the first step is simply to let the body be still. As the body slows down, as we become still, we can begin to let go of anywhere we're holding on to tightness, anywhere that we're gripping. We can start to tune in and feel the ground beneath us. Really feel the stability that that brings us. And even though the mind may still be moving, even though there may be some activity there, just notice that and don't try to fight it. Don't try to stop it. Just let it be as it is. In many ways, the keys to relaxation come not from new effort, not from trying to make things happen. True relaxation can only really happen when we just let things go, when we just let ourselves settle. So here, as we come into stillness, letting the body relax, really letting yourself settle here, little by little more. And whatever you might be holding on to in the body, whatever you might be holding on to in your mind, see if you can let that fall away. And in those moments where you are letting go, notice whatever sense of calm remains there. Notice whatever sense of space or ease there happens to be there. Let's take final gentle inhale breath here through our nose. Gentle exhale breath out our mouth. And lower our chin down. Slowly open our eyes. Here now we're going to remain in seated for our first pose, which will be butterfly shape. So we're going to take the soles of the feet together, have our knees apart here. And main thing to be careful of is you should feel really no sensation in your knees here. So if that's the case for your body, I might recommend grabbing your blocks parking them under the knees, or you can use blankets or pillows or whatever you have. For those of us for whom the knees feel happy in this pose, we're actually going to use the blocks in a different way. So get the basic setup in place. You'll take an inhale breath for some length. And as you exhale to fold forwards here, we're going to use maybe one or two blocks as a place to park the forehead on top of. Now, especially if you're sitting up with two blocks, I want you to be particularly careful about this. I've seen many times when I've taught this in class that maybe one or two students wipe out because their blocks are a little precarious. So set up in such a way that you're not unstable. And if for whatever reason you can't reach those blocks, you can just skip that part of it. Totally okay. If you can get lower than two blocks, maybe just one, you can use that too. But the idea of using the blocks here is just to really let the neck relax, just to give us a little bit of extra support. And I'm actually going to drop mine lower here now that I kind of see how this feels. Yeah, much better. So as we start the physical practice here, most important thing to remember is to listen to how your body feels. If any sharp sensation arises, if any strong sensation arises, 
You're going to want to adjust the pose and back out. You may even need to leave the pose entirely, depending on what you're feeling. And what I always say when I teach this sort of practice is, it's much better to do this work too gently than it is to do it too aggressively. You'll actually accomplish more by working in a more gentle manner, as opposed to trying to push hard and get more to happen. So assuming now that you're in the pose and that you feel safe, let the body relax. Let the physical tension truly start to settle. Kind of the secret power of yin yoga practice is we use this relaxation in the body to target and help the mind relax more and more. So whereas relaxing in the mind can be more challenging, it has a way of kind of perpetuating itself, kind of spinning on and on. We can relax the body a little more easily. And as the body relaxes, the mind will naturally calm down. The mind will naturally relax too. And over time, the two start to feed into each other. We're relaxing both the body and the mind at more or less the same time. Again, this is a process, so if there's still some tightness or tension, don't worry. Just keep coming back to this intention of letting go. Keep encouraging yourself to really relax and to settle here again and again. And again, not fretting if the mind is still a little bit busy here. Just let the thoughts come and go. Let them kind of naturally and gradually simmer down here. Let's see if you get those little tastes of stillness. Those little glimpses of calm in the moments where you are letting go, where you are really surrendering here. We'll be here for just about another minute or so. So take these final few breaths and truly settle. Truly land and relax into the shape. Here now, whenever you find it, take a final complete breath. Slowly begin to inhale and pick yourself up. And of course, catch those blocks before you rise up. You want to make sure that you um, have the support of them. They don't fall over. Once you're up, you can take a moment and roll the shoulders, roll the middle back and all of that. Let it go. Let's also take a moment and extend the legs here. We can let them relax, let them go for a few seconds. And let's now change gears. Let's find our way onto our belly. So belly is going to serve two purposes here. First of all, it's going to let us relax and kind of reset and resonate for a few moments after that longer hold. It's also going to be the entry point for the next pose that we're going to come into. But first here, just kind of relax onto the floor, settle onto your mat. Take a few deep breaths and using that word that I just said here, Resonate in the pose. 
feel the kind of energetic vibrations. Feel how, even after just one pose, things have started to release. Things have started to settle and unwind. And this work is definitely cumulative. With each pose, things will release a little bit more. So that more and more here we start to feel that sense of space in the body and in the mind too. So here on our belly, we're going to rise up into a sphinx pose. Simple back bend. You'll be lifting your chest up off the ground here. And so as you set up here, you can adjust this kind of infinite ways. The general idea will be to relax the chest and the shoulders, maybe to relax the back of the neck here. The intention is to feel a mild compression onto the lower back. And if your body requires a little bit more out of this, you could also like lift your elbows up on your blocks or a bolster if you have one. Another option to consider is you can actually pick the feet up off the floor and let the feet touch here to create an even stronger compression in the lower back if that suits you. So remembering those stronger isn't necessarily better and too strong sensation, sharp sensation is definitely a bad idea. So respect your body. Work in a way that's safe and supportive. And now that we're in the pose, let yourself become more or less still. Let yourself more or less relax. Now, as you relax here, just understanding that at times in this practice, you'll feel noticeable sensations, and at times some of what we feel can be a little bit challenging. There can be some friction or resistance. Part of the work we do is teaching ourselves to settle through that resistance again and again as it shows up. Because each time we practice letting go, that becomes a more natural habit. Relaxation isn't something we do once and then we're done with it. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing exploration. So truly here, can you keep surrendering? Can you keep letting go and relaxing? Always feeling that sense of calm in the body and hopefully starting to feel more and more of a sense of calm within the mind too. Take a final complete breath right here where we are. And slowly as you exhale, you can relax. Settle down to the floor and feel that decompression, feel that release happening in your lower back and take a few deep breaths into it. Feel that unwinding, feel that release. knowing that beyond the physical work that we're doing here, there's also the energetic work. By targeting the body in these ways, we start to release that tension. Things start to open up so we have more space, so that we have more ease there.
To help reset this even more, you can use your hands and gently press the hips back towards the heels, resting for a few moments in a child's pose. Feel how that's essentially the opposite shape of what you were just doing here. We've really rounded the spine. We've really encouraged it to release. From here now, we're going to change gears and we're going to make our way onto our back. So as you lie down, First position we're going to take here is just lying down with the feet flat on the floor. And you can walk your feet maybe about as wide as your mat so that now the knees fall into the center. I'm going to recommend having your hands like onto your abdomen. And just close your eyes. Continuing to feel that resonance, continue to feel that energetic kind of quality within the body. And again, the deeper intention of this sequence is to calm ourselves. So we're going to be on the back actually for the whole second half of this practice. So feel that super kind of calm and quality that being here might give you. From here, now we're going to set up for what we call stirrup pose. You probably know this as happy baby pose. So let's start out here just drawing the knees into the chest taking the knees a little bit wider and just understanding that this may be your version of the pose for today. Maybe holding onto the feet is too much. So doing the knees will give you pretty much most of the same benefits anyway. If you'd like to, though, you could reach up and hold on to the edges of the feet, more like a true happy baby pose as we think about it. So as you hold here, you'll feel, of course, a nice stretch onto the hips and the hamstrings, maybe a little bit of release onto the lower back. Again, like everything we do here, make sure that nothing you feel is painful, nothing you feel is intense. You can always adjust the pose. You can always back out early if things become a bit too much for you. In terms of how we use the arms here, remember it's not so much pulling, it's just relaxing the weight of the arms and gravity will naturally draw the legs down as they need to. What are you holding on to in this moment that you might be able to let go of? What could you release in either the body or the mind that's not serving you here? It's in those moments of letting go that we can access that deeper well of stillness, that deeper well of calm. Let's feel that here for just a little while longer, about another minute or so more. And take a final gentle inhale breath like so. As you exhale, release the feet. Lower them onto the ground. Maybe an easy sway side to side of the knees for a few seconds. And then I'm going to recommend coming into position with your feet a little wide again. Knees falling in. Just hands on the low belly, kind of getting centered here. Getting grounded here.
remembering to feel the resonance, these transition poses are very much part of the practice. We don't want to rush from one pose to the next. We really are slowing down, really deliberately taking our time through this process. And so from here, you can walk your feet a little bit closer in. Grab a hold of one of your blocks here. Um, if you happen to have a yoga bolster, that can also work particularly well. We're going to come into a pose called seagrass pose. So you're going to take that block the flat way on the floor, pick your hips up and slide it right beneath your lower back. And the idea is to make sure you feel really stable. You feel really supported by this. And again, like I said, a yoga bolster, even a pillow could work for this as well, depending on what you have around. And so for some of us, just having the feet on the floor will be where we rest. In that case, it's more like a supported bridge pose. But for those of us who are able to, what I'm going to recommend is to pick the feet up off the floor, coming into what we call seagrass pose. It's essentially the yin yoga version of a shoulder stand. And so the key here is to find a nice equilibrium point, a nice balance point where there's no strain happening to keep the legs lifted. You should absolutely be able to relax here. You feel like you're not able to find that point, no problem. Like I said, just keep the feet on the floor. You'll get most of the same benefits anyway. And you'll definitely get that ability to relax, which is most important for what we're doing here. And so through all of these variations, being upside down is naturally calming, naturally kind of soothing for the nervous system. So really appreciating that sense of calm, really appreciating that sense of space here. What can you still let go of within the body? What can you still let go of within your mind? Can you continue to feel more space and more calm wash over you again and again? Take a final complete breath right here where you are. If the legs are still lifted, you're going to slowly lower them down. Everyone will take their time to pick up the hips and remove the block. And just pay attention here. Rather than lowering straight down, can you actually kind of pull the hips towards the heel so that the low back gets extra long on the way out? Once you've touched base there, you can do a little sway side to side. It's kind of easy decompression for your lower back. Again, I'm going to recommend coming into that same kind of knees in pose for a few breaths. It's hands onto the low belly. Taking a few deep breaths there to really calm things, to really let things settle.
from here, we'll set up for a final pair of easy twists. So we're going to keep it simple for today. So I recommend just kind of drawing the knees in towards the chest and carefully rolling your way over onto your right hand side. From your right hand side, now you can open your left shoulder, your left arm anywhere out and alongside you. Making sure it feels comfortable, making sure any pull you feel on the side body is rather mild. You can always adapt this twist, making sure that it's comfortable for your body. We're entering the final phase of today's sequence, so really committing to becoming that much more calm and still. Really committing to releasing anything that you're still holding on to in the body or the mind. Just a few more slow breaths here on this side. Truly relaxing, truly letting go as you are here. And take a final complete breath right here. Slowly draw your legs back into the center. Take a few moments there. Just kind of swaying, kind of releasing side to side. And from there, as you're ready to, and draw the knees up into the chest. And slowly roll your way over towards the left. Once you're over on the left, you can open the right arm out alongside you. And again, the intention here is just to get that mild release, mild decompression onto the side body. In just the 30 minutes or so that we've been working, notice what you're able to let go of. Maybe notice how we're able to tap into that connection between the body and the mind. So that things do open up, so that things do release. Just another minute or so here. Nice and calm, nice and still, right where you are.
And take a final complete breath here where you are. Slowly take the knees back into the center. And as they come in here, you can just unwind. You can release a little bit side to side. Extend the legs out onto the floor. And if you're lucky enough to have a little more than just 30 minutes here, I'm going to recommend taking a full Shavasana, really fully relaxing here. Otherwise, if you have just the 30 minutes, let's take just a few slow breaths in. Give the body one last resonance, one last moment of calm to take it all in. From here, we can gently press our way up and we'll end officially today just in a comfortable seat with our eyes closed. Final moment to feel the full effects of our practice, truly noticing the change we've cultivated in both body and mind. And joining hands in front of the heart. Thank you so very much, as always, for joining me for this practice. And may our practice bring benefit to all beings. We bow. Um, thank you so much, everyone, as always, for joining. If you have any thoughts, questions, or comments, do let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more yin yoga practices like this each and every week.